Come Down Cat by Sonia Hartnett and illustrated by Lucia Masculo. It was nearly night time and the cat was still on the roof. Nicholas was getting worried. Come down, cat, he said. The cat peered down at him and said, Meow. The roof was high. Nicholas asked, Are you afraid to climb down, cat? Meow, said the cat. Nicholas fetched the ladder. It was an old ladder, and heavy and wobbly in every joint. It creaked and groaned as he climbed. Carefully he reached out. I'll get you down, cat. But, meow, said the cat, and he ran off across the tiles. Nicholas was dismayed. Cat, he cried, don't you want to come down? Do you want to stay on the roof all night? Meow, said the cat, hop, skip, jumping away. Ghosts and monsters and creepy crawlies come out at night. Won't you be frightened, cat? Meow, said the cat. So Nicholas climbed down the ladder, and the cat sat and licked her paws. In bed that night, Nicholas thought about his cat on the roof, alone with the dark, strange things. She'd see crawlies that creeped, and creepies that crawled, in the garden far below. She'd see a ghost, wafting over the fence. She'd see a monster, with a crumpled up face. She'd hear howls and whispers, and scritchy scratchy sounds. He fell asleep thinking about her, so little, yet so fearless. He didn't hear drops begin to fall, first one, then another. He didn't hear the cat say, Meow. He didn't hear thousands of drops fall down. Rain. The ghosts fled home to their dry roosts, the monsters to their warm caves. The cat ran helter-skelter across the tiles in fright, desperate for a place to hide. Nicholas woke to the lovely sound of rain. Then he heard something else. Meow! His cat! He didn't stop to worry about the dark night things. He jumped up and ran. Cat, cat, where are you? Meow! wailed the cat. The ladder's rungs were slippery. Its legs shivering in the wind. The roof seemed as high as the clouds. Nicholas trembled. Buddy climbed and climbed. I'm here, cat. Quick as quick, the cat leapt into his arms. In the kitchen, he dried her ears and whiskers and her dripping tail. You came down, cat, he whispered. Meow, said the cat. Safe in bed again, Nicholas remembered his cat on the roof, unafraid of the dark night things. He thought that she must be a very brave cat, and the cat thought that Nicholas must be a very brave boy. Duck Hat by Gaylene Gordon and illustrated by Chris Gaskin On Monday morning, Mabel opened her door. There was a duck on the back step. Hello, said Mabel. Meow, said the duck. Odd, said Mabel. Very odd. She put it in the lily pond, but it hated that. Meow, it yelled. I've never been scratched by a duck before, said Mabel. The duck would not eat bread, but it drank a bowl full of milk. It caught five mice and gave them to Mabel. Odd, said Mabel. Very odd. When the duck wasn't looking, Mabel hid the mice in the bread bin. I don't want to hurt its feelings, she said. The duck hid under the sofa and pounced at Mabel's toes. Well, said Mabel, you are a very different sort of duck. When Mabel started knitting, the duck joined in. It growled at the balls of yarn and stalked them like a mighty hunter. It rolled them over the floor. Odd, said Mabel. Very odd. 
The duck curled up by the fire and purred a bit. Then it went to sleep. That duck, said Mabel, thinks it's a cat. She got out her doctor book and looked up. What to do for a duck that thinks it is a cat? When the duck woke up, there were pictures all around it. There were pictures of ducks labelled duck and pictures of cats labelled cat. The duck changed the labels over. Well, said Mabel, what do I have to do to show you that you're a duck? The duck shrugged. Meow, it said. Mabel took the duck outside. Cats climb trees, she said. The duck climbed the tree. Odd, said Mabel. Very odd. Cats wash behind their ears, said Mabel. The duck washed behind its ears. Odd, said Mabel. Very odd. Butch, the dog who lived next door, bounced through the gate. Dogs chase cats, said Mabel. But they chase ducks too. Butch nearly got the duck, but it flew up to the top of the lamppost. You couldn't do that if you were a cat, said Mabel. Mabel pushed Butch through the gate and locked it. You can come down now, Mabel told the duck. Meow, said the duck. Cats can't fly down from lampposts, said Mabel, and I don't have a ladder. If you are a cat, you'll just have to stay up there. The duck flew down. It looked at Mabel. Quack, said the duck. You were only joking, weren't you, said Mabel. Quack said the duck, and it went for a swim in the lily pond to cool off. On Tuesday morning, Mabel opened her door. There was a cat on the back step. Hello, said Mabel. Quack, said the cat. Odd, said the duck. Very odd. <coughs> Cave Baby by Julia Donaldson and Emily Gravett Cave Baby's lucky. He lives inside a cave with his mum, who's good at painting, and his dad, who's very brave, and a saber-toothed tiger, a hyena and a hare, and a grey woolly mammoth and a big brown bear. Cave Baby's lonely. Nobody will play. Dad is busy being brave. Mum says keep away. Everything is boring. Then suddenly it's not, for in a corner of the cave he finds a brush and pot. Spots on the hyena, stripes on the hare, stars on the tiger, squiggles on the bear, zigzags on the mammoth. This is lots of fun. But mum and dad are furious and say, look what he's done. Cave Mum fetches water. She mutters and she wipes. No more spots and squiggles. No more stars and stripes. Cave Dad wags his finger. If you don't take care, a mammoth's going to throw you to the big brown bear. Cave Baby's restless. He's feeling wide awake. A long grey trunk comes sneaking in all wiggly like a snake. Where are you taking me? Where? Tell me where. Are you going to throw me to the big brown bear? Stripes in the forest. A tiger's lurking there. Don't throw me to the tiger or the big brown bear. Crashing in the bushes. A hare is leaping there. Maybe he's escaping from the big brown bear. A crackle in the bracken, a hyena's laughing there. Has he heard a joke about the big brown bear? A cave in the hillside, I wonder who lives there. I hope it's not, don't let it be, the big brown bear. The cave is bright with moonlight, the walls are plain and bare. Snoring in the shadows, someone's sleeping there. Cave baby's worried. He doesn't understand, until the woolly mammoth pops a paintbrush in his hand. A five-legged tiger, a long curly hair, 
horns on a hyena, a beard on a bear, a moustache on a mammoth. This is lots of fun. Then the mammoth wakes his family and says, Look what he's done. And they rollick and they frolic. They trumpet and they crash. They wade into the water. They roll and romp and splash. They shake the baby by the hand, then lift their trunks and wave, as the mammoth picks him up again and takes him to his cave. Cave baby's happy. He's fast asleep in bed. He dreams about a tiger with stripes of pink and red and a grass-green hyena and a sky-blue hare and a moon-yellow mammoth and a small brown bear. Thelma the Unicorn by Aaron Blaby Thelma felt a little sad. In fact, she felt forlorn. You see, she wished with all her heart to be a unicorn. Her best friend's name was Otis. He liked her quite a lot. He said, you're perfect as you are. But Thelma said, I'm not. And that was when she saw it, a carrot on the ground. It gave her such a great idea, she squealed and jumped around. She took that simple carrot and she tied it to her nose. I'll say that I'm a unicorn. It might just work. Who knows? Well, as she did, a truck drove by. The driver rubbed his eyes. Good grief, is that a unicorn? He shrieked in great surprise. As Thelma watched the swerving truck, it very nearly hit her. Would you believe that truck was filled with nice pink paint and glitter? Oh, Thelma looked amazing. She was a unicorn. I'm special now, she cried out loud. And so a star was born. All across the whole wide world, her fans would cheer her name. Thelma loved it every bit. The fame, the fame, the fame. Thelma was a superstar. Her dreams had all come true. But soon she found that so much fame was kind of tricky too. You see, her fans were mad for her. They'd scream and cry and laugh. They'd chase her everywhere she went to get her autograph. In fact, they'd chase her all day long. It never, ever stopped. They chased her while she exercised. They chased her while she shopped. Please don't chase me any more, she asked the screaming crowd. We'll chase you all we want, they said. We're fans, so it's allowed. And some were not her fans at all. No, some were really mean. And some just did the meanest things you'd really ever seen. So one dark night she felt quite sad, this famous little pony. She said, I thought that I'd feel great, but all I feel is lonely. And so with that she changed her mind, this lonely unicorn. She cleaned off all her sparkles and she ditched her magic horn. And then she walked right past the crowd. They didn't even notice. She thought, how nice that it would be to see her lovely Otis. And when he asked about her trip beneath their favourite tree, she simply said, oh, it was fun, but I'd rather just be me.